Hi, my name is Søren Gammermark. I'm one of the developers who worked on RealCloth and FOSS in Keyshot 9. I'm going to give you a bit of a presentation in some of the technical details of FOSS, how it's related to RealCloth and how it's not related to RealCloth. So let's first have a little bit of a look at that. Both flyways on RealCloth and the FOSS is very similar in many ways. They use them, some of the same code, some of the same ideas and are very similar in nature. In particular, if you look at the shading, it will be very similar, but there are some key differences. For example, if you do flyaways on real cloth, you will see that they tend to align with the flow of the yarn directions on the underlying weave pattern. It also takes the color, or each individual fiber takes the color for the underlying that yarn they arise from. And you can see this on this very extreme example I took on the left, where you see the fibers stinging out of the red parts are red and the fibers stinging out of the blue part are blue. And they also tend to be oriented differently depending on whether or not it's the blue or the red it arises from. In contrast, fuzz is not tied to the underlying cloth shading as you can see on the right. And you have greater control over fuzz. It's more controllable in a sense, but that can also sometimes be a disadvantage if you really want the realistic appearance that you can get with real cloth. But let's get back to how the real cloth flyaways respond to light. And this is also the default shading that you will see on fuzz fibers. So if you have a single piece of fiber, like a, in this case indicated by the red cylinder, and it is hit by light indicated by the yellow arrow pointing towards the incident light then this light is going to be reflected off the surface of the fiber. And this is actually going to result in a specular reflection in a cone around the axis of the fiber. And I've shown this with green. And the cone even extends fairly much towards the back, or at least towards the grazing edge of the incident light towards the uh, fiber. Uh, and another component of the light scattering off this fiber is the red one I've shown, which is also conical in shape, but is the result of two refractions into the plastic fiber I've shown. So I've created a small scene where I set the transmitted light as red and the specular reflected light as green, as you can see the material properties uh, and the arrows pointing to the component of the light. This means that if I put a light source behind the material ball as shown on the right, you can see that since the light source is behind, I should primarily see the transmitted light, which in this case is the red light. So that's why you see this red rim light um, caused by the light from behind hitting the fibers on the edge of the surface and being transmitted towards the camera direction. And this allows you, because the fibers are sticking out of the surface, this really allows you to send light around edges or corners of a surface, giving you this rim light effect. If I, on the other hand, put the light source in front of the material ball, you can see I primarily see the green color, which is the light that's specularly reflected uh, towards the direction of the incident light. This is very similar to some of the other materials we have in Keyshot, where you can set a specular reflection or you can set a specular transmission color. In this case, however, the resulting appearance is quite different because the reflected and transmitted colors are in a cone around the axis of the fibers and because the fibers are sticking out of the surface it gives a quite a different effect on the appearance. Another aspect of the fuzz is how do you choose the lengths of these each individual fiber and this is not so, such an easy question to answer as you might think because you can do this in many ways. You can for example choose a uniform distribution where all the lengths that the user chose is roughly the same or is exactly the same. You can choose a normal distribution, which is the green curve here. It's a bell curve where the lengths tend to cluster. You can choose a different distribution that I'm going to show you in a moment. If you choose the uniform distribution where all the different lengths that you can get are uniformly likely or equally likely, then you get something shown in this image. And you'll notice that there's too many small fibers and you cannot really get a handle on what is the mean value, what is the average length that I kind of perceive them as being. There's no clear indicator of this. So this is not a good way of doing it. If we choose a normal distribution, which is also known as the bell curve, if any of you have heard this, very common in nature, um, 
you see that the effect is, is much better. You have a much clearer sense of where the mean value is. But on the other hand, if you take a close look at, for example, the small flyaway fibers on any clothes you may have nearby, or if you look at a field of grass, you will notice that there is actually often quite a significant amount of outliers in the sense that there are a significant amount of flyaways that stick further out from the main body of the fibers. And this is not really captured by the normal distribution. We can use different distribution that actually fits very well with measurements of, for example, the distribution of stone sizes or distribution of he measured hair lengths or something like that. Uh, and it's a more balanced distribution and you can also see you get more of these long outlier effects uh, that gives it a very natural look compared to the other ones, the other distributions. Another thing that's easy to overlook that you can uh, do with fuzz is you can control the direction. This is implicitly included in the real cloth flyaways, but for the fuzz, you can use a normal map to control the direction of each individual fiber sticking out of the surface. You may wonder wh why do I need a normal map for that? Because normally I would use a normal map for scratches or something like that. But remember that a normal on a surface is actually just a vector pointing away from the surface saying what are the what is the tangent plane of the surface or in which on which side is the surface pointing. Um, so it's basically a direction attached to the surface pointing in some direction that we can use to control the shading of the surface. And this is why we use normal maps because we can kind of use that to capture small variation in, in surface height uh, using a different direction of the uh, tangent plane of the surface. But it is just a direction on the surface, so we can just as well use this normal map to control the direction that the fibers grow out of. Here I made an image to the right, and you can see the normal map in the insert at the center. And I took some inspiration from my background in physics, uh, where this is actually a dipolar field, which is also what you see uh, in rod magnets. So if you take a rod magnet and put a piece of glass on top and you drop a lot of small pieces of metal onto it, you will see exactly this pattern uh, where the metal, small metal rods would, uh, will align like this. This is because this is actually the shape of the magnetic field of uh, a rod magnet. And I just basically input that vector field as a normal map and loaded it into Keyshot and used it as a direction texture as you can see in the material graph on the left. So please try and play with this. You can do some very interesting things with this. Finally, to summarize, uh, FUS is very much like the real cloth flyaways. You have greater flexibility, but with that flexibility comes the cost that it's not so well tied to the underlying weave pattern and the shading of the real cloth. But you can use it for many different things. And remember to have a look in nature at how does the grass look and how does all sorts of things with things sticking out of it look and look at the distribution of lengths to see if you can spot this effect that I was talking about. And remember to try to play with the direction te texture because it can create some very interesting effects. Finally, thank you for listening to this Tech Talk segment. I hope it gave you a bit of an inspiration for what to tweak and how to play with it and a greater understanding of why things are created the way they are.